Children of strict parents, what did they do when they caught you smoking? When we were in high school, my friends and I faced the challenges of strict parents and the pressures of Catholic school life. Looking for a way to cope, we found ourselves gathering in the school restroom, seeking solace before the school day began. During our junior year, a girl named Grace started joining us in our morning hangouts. She never said much, she simply stood in the corner, observing. Although we found it a bit strange, she wasn't causing any harm, so we accepted her presence without question. One day, my friend Stacy offered Grace her vape pen. To our surprise, Grace eagerly accepted and even struck up a conversation with us about one of our eccentric teachers. We discovered that she was genuine and easy to get along with, so we welcomed her into our group. Outside of our bathroom meetings, we didn't interact much. We weren't exactly close friends, but we enjoyed our occasional conversations. Grace eventually asked me where she could find something like the vape pen she tried in the bathroom. I introduced her to Benji, a fellow student known for such supplies. One day, Benji approached me and asked if I knew the girl who'd been asking for a vape. I confirmed that I did, and he mentioned that she had recently purchased a few vaporizers from him. I didn't think much of it at the time and continued with my day. However, everything changed when Stacy and our friend Patrice were called to the school office during class. We assumed it was just another dress code violation, as we were accustomed to such incidents. They returned looking shaken and informed us that the police were checking lockers. It turned out that Grace's strict mother had found two vape pens in her laundry and relentlessly pressed Grace for information about their origin. Instead of telling the truth, Grace had mentioned her friend Stacy as the source, complicating matters. Panic spread through the school, but Benji managed to collect and hide the devices from the girls in his backpack. As they were only calling girls to the office at that point, my friends and I remained untouched. I played the role of the clueless innocent when my name was called, successfully avoiding any suspicion. However, someone eventually revealed Benji's involvement, and he was summoned to the dean's office. To our amazement, he didn't implicate anyone else, even though he had a significant amount of substances and devices in his possession. In the end, Benji faced the consequences alone, and the rest of us emerged from the incident unscathed. It was a surprising turn of events, and Benji became a legendary figure in our school for not revealing any secrets.